since COVID started in 2020, that's when we really started getting going with wastewater surveillance. And it's really blossomed in the last four years. Not only have the number of sites expanded in California, we were only monitoring at six sites back in 2020. Um, and now the CDC's National Wastewater Surveillance System has expanded to over 1,500 sites and has a presence in 50 states and jurisdictions. So it's really grown, not just in terms of monitoring COVID and its variants through wastewater, but now for other routine diseases. So influenza, RSV, and other respiratory viruses are now commonly being measured in wastewater and, and surveyed. And then we can also use it for things like emerging diseases. So things like Mpox or now the H5N1 outbreak. Um, and it's been used for things like polio and for um, other rare diseases that we don't necessarily have good surveillance for like EBD68. And so because we're able to see it in wastewater, that can really help give us some insight into what's circulating in the community. Antimicrobial resistance is a really important area that we're all really interested in. This is an area of active research in wastewater surveillance. There's a lot of different groups that are out there monitoring for things like Candida auris and other emerging infections and looking for antimicrobial resistance genes in wastewater surveillance with the hopes that that information can be really directly useful at the hospital or nursing home or other kind of infection prevention settings. Wastewater surveillance has been really useful and has really evolved in the last couple of years, and it's still growing. I think there's a lot of room to add new pathogens and think about novel ways to use the tool. But it's also something that's available now. We have the tools, we have most of this data is available publicly on different dashboards. And I think that's something that we as ID physicians really should be able to use and start to think about and try to incorporate into our clinical practice as well as thinking about how we're using it at the hospital preparedness level.